Hello and welcome to this episode of Acrinos Access Live. I'm your host, Eric Matei, joined by the one and only Bill Gerber for an amazing conversation today all around delivering the modern eye care experience. Mr. Gerber, thank you for joining us. Hello, welcome to Acrinos Access. Thank you so much. I am so honored to be here. I know we've been working on uh, connecting uh, to be part of Acrinos Access for a while. And I am so glad that our schedule is finally aligned and we can make it happen today. So this is a, a delight and an honor. Absolutely. Well, let's roll with it. And uh, look, Bill, I know before we uh, before we hit live here, uh, we were touching on a lot of a lot of things we're going to want to jump into. So yeah. definitely viewers, audience, um, hold on to the pearls because we're going to be running through a lot of things. And definitely stay tuned to the end so you can reach out to Bill, kind of learn more some other things you can get involved in to uh, revolutionize, modernize this experience in modern eye care. So, um, Bill, let's go ahead and take it from the top. And look, man, what is the role of the experience for the modern optometry practice? It's probably the most important thing going, because when you think about it, you leave your eye care experience, you leave your you leave your appointment, your, your time with the optometrist, your time with the optician, your time with the techs. And what do you think about? Do you think about the um, high-tech nature of the Optos machine specifically that they used on you? Do you think about the, uh, you know, the coffee maker in the lobby? Do you think about, you know, how nice Sharon was? you're probably thinking about how nice Sharon was, right? You're probably thinking about what my overall experience was. And if your experience is great and you love it, then what it'll do is it ratchets up the importance and the relevance of eye care, right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. So, okay. So, so now we then get into kind of the, 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 this, the, the, the entire, because I noticed how you mentioned on a, on a few different things there, but it, it really all culminates with realizing that there's not just one single thing. And I think that's what we were talking about before going live here yeah. is it's important for, for modern optometrists to realize that it's not the one thing, it's, it's mm -hmm. the culmination, right? That, that experience, that total experience is greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah, without question. And, and the challenge is that... Um, you know, we're all busy, like everybody in eye care is jamming busy for the most part, except if you, let's say, maybe you just started and you're, you're waiting for people to show up. Um, but the truth is, you know, just about everybody we deal with, um, even if it's a cold start, they're, they're busy. And, um, you know, we're busy working in the business all the time, but everybody, it's almost a cliche to say working on the business uh, and when you work on the business, that's where the experience develops, right? Yeah. That's when we think yeah. about things like, you know, how should the bathroom be painted and should there be nice candles in it? Should there be a scent machine in the front? Uh, you know, does the LED sign in front of the practice, does it change colors or is it just a static, boring sign? So uh, making that time to really focus in and hone in the elements, right? The ingredients that make up the experience is probably one of the most important things I think any eye care practitioner can do. Awesome. So, okay, so now let's get a bit deeper with this. Now yeah. let's get a bit deeper with this. We're going deep. And we're going deep. We're going deep. Going deep. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk about the, the, the designed experience on yeah. three fronts. And let's take it first and foremost uh, the patient journey. Yep. So let's talk about how does it designed experience impact the patient journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the patient journey is, uh, it's a long one, right? And the patient journey doesn't just begin when somebody walks in the door, right? Patient sure. journey with, with eye care being one of the most searched medical topics out there. Uh, you can bet your 
sweet money that people are thinking about eye care way before they even choose your practice, right? They're thinking about eye care and they're investigating things uh, way before. I'll give you a great example. Um, about six months ago, I, yours truly, had a floater, okay? Ooh. And I had a floater, right? And uh, uh, Let me toss this in there. Depending yeah. on what state you are in, depending on what state you are in, an optometrist is perfectly positioned to be able to do that. Depending on what state you're in, because right now as we're recording this, it is May of 2023, and there's a lot of really cool things going on with Scope of Care. I didn't mean to interrupt Mr. Gerber. So Bill discovered a floater. Okay, so Bill discovers a floater. Bill knows what a floater is, right? Um, so my rational mind is uh, like, okay, I know what a floater is. I'm going to deal with this. It's no big deal, right? And then the second day, it was, kind of seemed a little bit more pronounced. So what do I do? I, uh, I, I call my OD. Uh, like, I got a floater. Liz, I got a floater. What's up? And, uh, you know, I have a lot of ODs. I got a lot of ODs. I probably have had more exams than anyone. <laughs> In the industry. In fact, I go to a support group for it. It's, uh, it's uh, EA. That's great. Right? That's uh, funny. That's funny. So, so, so this is an interesting thing. So <clears throat> I started researching what, what's a floater, right? What is a floater? Like, and so I get, get the info. I Google it. Of course, after 15 minutes, I'm a total expert, right, in, in optometry and everything. Absolutely. I mean, you Google anything after 15 minutes, you're a freaking expert. A total expert, right? And so um, I'm like, okay, I know it rationally. What's, what's going on here? And I'm like, okay, so I'm going to be more educated when I go to my, my OD, uh, who, who tells me I can't get in for like eight days. We're totally booked. We're this and that. And I start freaking out a little bit. Like I'm thinking, man, do I have a tumor? What's going on? What is happening here? Right. And so it was a really good experience for me because it, it helps me realize as a uh, creator of experiences for eye care, um, what somebody's going through mentally, right? So th this is probably one of the more important things to recognize is that we need sensitivity training <laughs> sometimes sure. yeah, for, for what we're doing. It's, it's super important. So um, long story short on patient experience, uh, I, I relate that just because it, it's, it's relevant and it's top of mind, but it's also where the, the journey begins. So typically... You know, somebody starts researching something um, in broad sense, or if they have a specific issue, hey, I'm sort of losing sight in the sty, or this is happening, they start to research it. So that's where the journey begins, right? And then if the journey uh, then connects with a provider, um, this is all online. It could be a week, a day, a month, six months, a year before you ever walk in to the location. So that's why uh, not just the right website, but the right social, the right reviews, the right experience, the right engagement tools online are critical, right? This is, this is the thing. And I can't tell you how many great websites I come across now in eye care, which is a total contrast to five years ago. Sure. Um, and I, I, can, I can say how freaking sad it makes me to see so many, can I use the word crappy? On Absolutely, what? I don't see why not. It's okay, I'm sanctioned. Unless we're being censored. I mean, this is an Akrinos broadcast, so uh, you know you know how we roll. Okay, so uh, there's still a ton of crappy websites out there. And sure. even some of yeah. the corporate websites, uh, when I say corporate websites, what I'm referring to are some of the large uh, groups, right? I'm gonna re refrain from using any names uh, because sure. they are my clients and uh, I like to have good clients stay happy with us. But um, the truth is that there's still a lot of websites that are so generic, they're so boilerplate, they're so blah that if, if I came across that, I wouldn't think that this is the place I wanna go. I wanna to go to a place that's yeah. pure friendly, professional, engaging, like the real people. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. That's what people want. So, so we start there, right? And then once we walk in, uh, we have to ask ourselves, you know, into that, into that place, you know, what's the parking lot like, right? What's the par parking situation? What is the exterior of this place look like? What are we advertising? Uh, is it our services? Is it our products? What's going on? So that's just before you even walk in, right? Then you walk in 
And then how are you greeted? Right? How are you greeted? Are you, are you greeted? Right? This is a, sure. yeah. a huge yeah. thing. So I have a question for you, Eric. So initial greeting, right? You have been in thousands of practices, I would presume by now, huh? Yeah. I mean, the years add up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know you're the guy. I know you're the guy asking the question, but I, I want to ask you this question. Is that okay? absolutely lay it on me? Totally. Okay. Totally. And, 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 and by the way, and that's also, and for those viewers that may not know prior to Acrinos, I was in industry for 11 plus years and, you know, in and out of, of uh, environments across the spectrum of clinical and retail environments. So absolutely Bill lay it on me. Okay. So <clears throat> in your experience, walking into practices, the first impression, how, what percentage of practices that you've gone into, would you say have an awesome first impression? Awesome. Awesome. 20% max. 20% max. At most, okay. at most. And okay. basically why am I saying that? The 2080 rule. So it yep. may actually be more like a 10 to 15%. Yeah. So to that point, you know, the first impression, thanks for sharing that. Um, I've been asking every sales rep I know and I come across for the last year the same question. Sure. Uh, and what kind of what kind of responses are you hearing? Well, and I, I'll drill down a little bit more with reps because I think reps um, uh, reps are great um, observers of the truth, right? Because they oh, have yes. a, a point of contrast to go from. Um, what I'm getting is uh, ten to fifteen percent. Sure. Right? That's what I'm getting on average. Ten to fifteen percent have a great first impression, something that's engaging. It feels good. It feels. Um, you know, like you're welcome in a place you really want to be. Um, I think one of the biggest impediments to uh, an amazing uh, uh, first impression is the monolithic reception desk. Yeah. Okay, where there's two or three people sitting there. Uh, and it's, it's just this barrier, right? Um, we, many of us who are watching today know Mick Kling and Jason too of InVision Optometry in San Diego, who are literally like, right up the street. I could, uh, <laughs> I could probably walk there in 30 minutes from where I'm at right now. Sure. Um, and uh, what they did when they designed their practice is um, the first impression is, is basically first impression is uh, a coffee bar. So you walk up, it's a flight of stairs. You walk up and the first thing you see is a little cool stand. Sure. Sweet espresso machine, right? And what does it say? Does it say, welcome to InVision Optometry, your source for amazing eye care and experience? No. What's it say? It says, hello, coffee. Hi, welcome to InVision. There's always a bright, perky, good-looking person there. Hi, welcome to InVision. Before we get started, can I get you coffee, right? What would you like? Sure. You want an espresso? You want a cappuccino? You want a... I'm, I'm partial to vanilla lattes. In case anybody's watching and they want to buy me a... Vanilla latte someday. I'm down. Um, May I say I'm I'm partial to double espresso and I drink my coffee black. So if ever we're in company, I always drink coffee. Do, do you that, put that, 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 that's why we get along? That's why we get along so well, Bill. Because I'm like, just give it to me black. Just give it to me straight. And you're like, let's do some. Right. Let's let's, let's juju it up a little bit here. Yeah, that's it. Juju it up. <laughs> juju it up. So so I think this. Yeah. Okay. This, this is super important, like this first impression when you walk in. What's the vibe? You know, it's like a restaurant you walk into. What's the vibe, right? Um, you ever walk into a restaurant and there's like attitude at the reception area? Oh, right? Lord. You're like, oh, oh my God, you're, you're way cooler than anybody I know. Here, here in New Orleans, that don't fly. Here in New Orleans, that don't fly. That's a cool way to get your, get your restaurant on the outs. It's all yeah. about the experience. So, you know, this, this front desk person, if you have a desk, if you don't have a desk, if you have an espresso machine or you don't, uh, doesn't necessarily matter. But this director of first impressions, I learned that the term many years ago, director of first impressions is your first person that you, you encounter. And that person needs to be ready no matter what's going on. Uh, they need to be ready to engage, right? Welcome. Uh, and, and rather than just go through the motions of, okay, I see you have a 1030 appointment here. Here's the clipboard, fill out this paperwork, uh, give me your detailed medical history and this and that, and you have three minutes to do it. No, 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 no. I think the, the experience has to be defined also like, okay, I'm, we're so glad you came today. 
Uh, we do have a little paperwork that we need from you uh, next time. If you want to fill it out online, feel free to do that. Um, and here's what's going to happen today. So thank you for coming. Your eye exam is going to consist of this, this, and this, right? And then you'll have time uh, to browse our optical. And if you'd like to browse our optical a little bit beforehand, feel free to do that too, right? Um, so I think warm, welcoming, engaging, calming is yeah. huge because I, I relate it back to my floater story. I knew perfectly well what a floater was, okay? But in the course of three or four days until I got seen, I had made this in my mind that I've got some medical condition, right? And then maybe I only have two days to live, <laughs> which is completely ridiculous. So, uh, so those are some experiential things. And, I, and then we can get into a lot more detail as we go Absolutely. on. Absolutely. But this first touch point, right? And I think one of the things that I'm seeing a lot of practices do now is uh, rather than just have the general staff meeting, you know, every week or every two weeks, um, they're really working on how do we create the optimal experience here at Family Vision Care or, sure. you know, uh, Acrinos Eye Care, right? You, Got to catch you. Got to catch you. It's not really our lane, though. It's not really our lane. We, 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 our lane, we prefer helping these doctors open the clinics, but it does, it is kind of, catchy. Yeah. Uh, no, so, so the, the point is um, that this has to be dissected just the same way. If you're going to make a great meal, you need yeah. to know your ingredients. You need to know how to cook them. You need to That's know it. what goes first, right? What goes second and then what happens next. So I think this uh, plotting out of the touch points and the sequence of events is probably one of the most critical things that, uh, uh, modern practices can do. So sure. totally, yeah. totally vital. Totally yeah. vital. You know what's fascinating is you were mentioning that, Bill. Uh, and, and by the way, for those of you that are just joining us, hanging out here, uh, Acrinos Access, we're hanging out with the one and only Bill Gerber. We're talking about delivering the modern eye care experience. And uh, Bill, to, to, to build on what you were just saying about how to build that experience and letting it be kind of this, 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 this flowing. I mean, let's face it. I think everyone that was listening to you just walking through that, right. That, that practice out in San Diego, everyone's like, Oh my gosh, that, that, that's amazing. Yeah. But that could never happen in my practice. Yeah. And so, so my question for you is this, the degree to which processes, Right. Because like you can't, the reason why practices are doing the same old, okay, what time you're here? Here's a clipboard, fill this out, get it back to me, is because the staff is running around with all these old antiquated processes doing stuff yeah. the same way stuff was being done 20 and 30 years ago, Brill. And that's, you know, oh my gosh. So, okay. So I think we need to start with the process. Like if we want to have the experience, we need to be sure that the processes are in place that we have the bandwidth to be able to provide the experience, you know? Um, so, okay. So in that regard, then how do we define which elements of the experience we'd want to, I mean, look, you, we, you and I both know it, it, it's all about baby steps. You can't make this big sweeping change and, and think that everything's going to happen overnight. Right. So you really need to do some due diligence to prioritize. So how can doctors kind of start to, understand like where's the biggest opportunity in overhauling my experience like for some it may be i've got a crappy website that's a no-brainer okay but for others hey we have this really cool modern website we got these different things but you know so help me understand how folks can start to and help our audience understand how can they start to kind of like dissect and understand where they need to enhance their experience absolutely so uh first thing is creating a touch point map Touch okay. point map. Ooh. Yeah, that's what uh, us in the design field, we use big terms like that to sound really <laughs> impressive. Yeah, are you impressed? Touch point map. I mean, map, right? that, 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 that's a $10 word, as we said. Yeah. $10 word. Just send me $100,000 and I'll create a touch point map. Done. done. Actually, it went up two fifty. dollars Put some, cool, put some um, fun graphics on it and it's done. Super simple. So <clears throat> this is this is a, a examination of get a piece of paper. Get a pen. Look at my cool pen. AT&T Fiber. I just found it here. So, and you say, where, where are the touch points? Where are the online touch points? 
right? Where are the uh, telephone touch points potentially? Mm -hmm. Where are the uh, first impression touch points? Where is the paperwork? Where is the pretest? Where's the special testing? Where's the exam? Where's the optical? Where's the post? Right? And you start to define that. And then you look also from that, you look for things that don't mesh, right? And, and we know, everybody knows, like you've, let's say you just invest in the most amazing website in the world, right? It's totally cool. There's smiley, happy people. There's online forms. There's booking. There's blah, blah, blah. You got all that. But your office looks like, you know, the Brady Bunch used to go there in the 70s disconnect right you like the brady absolutely bunch, absolutely right? no I'll, I'll love me some brady bunch man come on so those those uh those touch points end up becoming super important right you say okay sure. where, where are we out of step right where where are we out of sync in this is it a look of a place is it a website is it is it um you know you've got uh, Tina, who talks like this on the phone and just like not having the right, you know, effect of things. And, and I know what it's like. I own a business. I ran a business. I run my own business now. And so I know what it's like where there's more issues than there is time. Right. So so that's why it's really important is to do this incrementally where you say, OK, here's yeah. our points. Yeah. Right? Because what, what you're going to find is once you map out your touch points, you know, and what I mean by touch point is when these are the places that the patient intersects with your business, okay, all along the way. Uh, you know, and it even comes to like post appointment follow up. You know, do we call them later uh, if they're, you know, have expressed an interest in fashion, for instance? Do we call them to tell them, oh, the new LaFont frame came in or the new Tom Ford or whatever? And, and I guarantee you, there's probably 20, 30, 40% of every uh, patient face that loves that kind of thing. So, so that's a, that could be an optional touch point. So sure. yeah. by identifying these and, and honing in on them, then you can decide, okay, where do we want to put energy, right? Where do we yeah. want to put energy? So, yeah. Yeah. Because what I see a lot of times, you know, especially as I do seminars, um, and I just got a call from someone yesterday, I'll, I'll share with you. Uh, what I find a lot of times people go to seminar, right? It's like an all day thing. It's a CE. You get all jacked up on ideas, right? Ah, and then what? And then what happens? Monday happens. Then, ah, Monday happens. Monday We're right happens. back in the wheel. Right back right? in the wheel. You know, That's your it. kid's sick. Um, the, the cat ate the dog. Uh, you know, some Mondays I'm just like, oh my god, can I get through Monday without getting that text message? Like, oh, I'm sure. not going to make it in today or whatever. Like, like yeah. that stuff. So, so, so what happens is Monday in the reality of things, and that's why it's really, really, really important to say, okay, you know what, we are. If if the objective is um, working on experience, as we're talking about today, that's why it's important to say, okay, you know what, month one we're going to handle this, right? Month two, we're going to handle this. Month three, we're going to handle this. And then it yeah. becomes part of a strategic plan. I would yeah. suggest yeah. a six-month experiential, almost boot camp for yeah. a practice, right? Because yeah. I, I don't care who you are. If you're Mick Kling and Jason Two up the street, or you know, if you're Pete Kehoe, or if you're like whatever, Stacey Jen or Lori Sorensen, I mean, these rock stars of optometry, I can tell you one thing. They are always looking at their touch points or always looking at how do we improve and the thing is too once you once you have your plan down bummer it's not completely done because it keeps evolving that's it it keeps evolving that's what keeps it so exciting though bill you know what i mean that, that's really that's really what keeps it so excited by the way i do want to inject this in there um you mentioned some big names some big names in the industry that have grown mm -hmm. remarkable practices remarkable brands and, yeah. and are sharing that um just wait, just wait, because soon you will see in those ranks, all these cold starts that Acrinos is yeah. bringing to reality, all these doctors buying these fixer uppers, bringing them to reality. Absolutely. Um, but I think it's critical. I think it's critical uh, to tie it back to you. If we're talking about, okay, we know we want to modernize this experience. Mm -hmm. How do we start? And you mentioned start with that map. And uh, yeah. as a matter of fact, J Jen Denham, you know, Jen, she's uh, what yeah. chief growth officer at, at Optify. I mean, that touch, and Jen says right here, the touch point map 
including a digital footprint is key. No question. Absolutely. Jen, thank you so much for dropping that comment. It is absolutely critical, right? For viewers out there, right? You know, start with building this touch point map. Yeah. You really want to be sure you're getting all those touch points, right? To Bill's point, to Jen's point, it includes the digital. It includes every little piece through the practice as well as post post practice. Notice how we're not, notice how we're, and to our viewers out there, notice that we're not talking about the exam. Let's remove exam from our thinking and think about the experience that we're providing to patients, right? It's the same reason why we always want to say, do not, do not attract people who are looking for eye exams. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. If you attract people who are looking for an eye exam, then you're competing with everyone else on the block. Attract people who you want to fill your practice, given your scope of care, given your product offerings, and everything that you're truly all about. And it starts with, it starts with, Putting together again to Bill's point, to Jen Jenham's point, that touch point map with all the pieces. And then, Bill, you said to take a step further from that touch point map, then we get into making the change. So help us understand now. Okay, so we've done the touch point map. We realize it may be six to 12 months after we've done the map, because mm -hmm. doing the map itself may take mm -hmm. four to eight, you know, it may take a month or two. Because again, busy practices. Yep. You as the practice owner, though, is imperative. It's up to you to prioritize this. So make it a priority. Create your touch point map. Then, Bill, how would you suggest, how would you advise doctors? They've created their touch point map. Now, how do they prioritize which parts to modernize? Well, right? okay. Well, first of all, I think it's really critical that, that everybody understands that each touch point needs to be supported and you have to identify who the owner of that touch point is. And, you know, in small practices, small practices, it could be, you know, there could be two people working there or three people. So, you know, you own this part, this part and this part. Right. Um, but identifying the touch points without an owner um, is sort of like making a plan without a deadline or a, a definitive objective and somebody being responsible. So I think that's the first part you want to, with your touch point map, you definitely want to say, okay, you know what, uh, Jenny and uh, Tom are responsible for, you know, website and online communication. Sarah and Phil are the are directors of first impressions, depending on what happens. And then you, then you drill down, right? What's the scripting? For instance, what do we say? Because words matter, right? What do we say? How do we respond? You know, is our, is our, uh, are we using modern systems? Uh, you know, appointment confirmation systems like Weave or, you know, Demand Force or any of these things. And then not only are we using them, but what is our messaging? So this is super critical, right? Um, I think the, so to get to your question, thank you for, for posing that. Um, I think what's extremely critical too is that um, we look at how clear we are in uh, communicating what is going to happen during the visit, right? 90% or more of the seven to 8,000 practices I've been in, I stopped counting four or five years ago, um, all around the world, uh, and some of them are just the most amazing place you've ever walked into. They smell good. They look good. They're like, wow, the people are just like, whoa, did they just walk out of a hot yoga studio or a fashion shoot or what is going on here? Because they're all so beautiful. And then I walked into others, the vast majority of others that are just like, whoa, I would never come here on my own unless perhaps I, that was the only place to go. Um, but the thing, the thing that I see is, uh, most of us are presenting a confusing uh, path to the patient, okay? Um, I can't tell you how many people I've had uh, give me feedback about their, their experience and have confusion as to what's happening. So uh, one of the things you can do to level up uh, in this area is have a, um, it could be a brochure, it could be digital signage, it could be signage, it could be graphics that says, you know what, this is the family vision care experience, right? We start with this, we do this, we move to this, we move to this, okay? Number one. Number two, I think it's extremely critical that we start to engage people with eyewear as soon as possible in the experience, right? Um, 
to Optify's uh, product and what they do. I'm a big fan, obviously. We're working on some very cool collaborations right now that uh, I cannot disclose until, you know, until I can disclose it. Um, but I think what's, what's really important is that we start engaging people with eyewear. People love eyewear, right? And uh, the, the more they can do that online, they can do virtual try-on, they can say what they like, they can start to communicate preferences, um, lifestyle information, uh, then we can really, then, we, then we're in a position to be of service, right? I think one of the uh, big mistakes that's made in eye care is that we don't find out enough about the human that we're dealing with, right? Because like, I mean, we know each other pretty good, but I, I mean, it's really through social media that I know that you ride bikes, right? That you sing sweet music on the guitar, right? That we are gonna jam sometime. I mean, like, I, I know a lot about you, but the fact is, if you walk into your average OD's practice, what do they know about you, right? What do they know about you? So I think that um, just the same way that somebody's interested in you as an individual, we can, we can craft our experience so that we're digging deep, right? And um, I have data. I just did the three Walman universities over the last month, month and a half. And how many, by the way, Bill, how many total attendees? I know I was following the journey. You and uh, Fernell were getting around, no. Fernell Walker were getting around, uh, we're in the circuit. Y'all had sold out crowds and all well, over a thousand cities. people yeah, in the last awesome. uh, three months um or sorry in the last month uh we did minneapolis we did seattle and uh last week we did um toledo perrysburg ohio um in each one there's three 350 something like that i think minneapolis nice. close to 400 so almost a thousand people and and one of the things that uh that fernell and i are doing and shout out to my brother fernell walker he's a uh, he's amazing individual and uh people have called me the ever ready bunny of optical but i think he's got me beat this dude is, <laughs> this dude's always on a plane it's, it's crazy um but i i think uh you know one of the things that and the reason i brought that up is that we've been doing live polling and we've been getting a lot of of data right and one question we ask is uh who is using a lifestyle questionnaire, a dedicated lifestyle questionnaire, either digitally or a paper lifestyle questionnaire that digs deep, right? Like what are your hobbies? What are your interests? How many hours are you on the computer? What's important to you? Do you want contacts? Do you want classes? Like, you know, what's, who are you? Guess what the percentage is. Okay, this is my, um, my opportunity for rhetorical questions. <laughs> okay, so wait, wait, what we're talking about is how many, again, so, and just so that everyone understands, yeah. right, Bill is sharing data, not from like polling 10 doctors he work with or 10 friends, what have you. This is coming from literally like thousand plus poll takers at a variety of sites. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. and we're, and the question is what percentage of them have, have like a legit lifestyle questionnaire. And it, now, now, as far as lifestyle questionnaire, Bill, just so that everyone is on the same yeah. page, yeah. this is not medical questionnaire. This is not, you know, oh, do you experience halos when you're driving at night? Like, no. Lifestyle questionnaire is more like what you said. Come to truly understand that person and come to know that, well, as I've come to know you, Bill, I know you yeah. enjoy yoga. I know you enjoy walks on the beach. You travel everywhere with your dog. I you're do. into design I and am. music yeah. and culture and all these things so um by the way i did not know you had the floater until you had shared earlier um, so so what percent of practices go beyond asking about floaters and actually ask about lifestyle i don't know 20 percent. i hope okay ready give me um, a drum roll okay is my heart broken as a matter of fact i got I, my computer set up on a kayon okay it is Really? It is, brother. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I told you, we go to New Orleans and we jam. Uh, Two percent. Two percent? Are you kidding me? Okay. And this is uh, the primary attendees of this out particular, of my chair. these these Walman universities, and there's some more coming up, so come on out, uh, everybody, and uh, check them out. Um, these are opticians, optical managers, techs primarily, right? Sure. A few doctors just to pick on from time to time. So, uh, So, two percent. Right. And the response levels that we we're getting were 85, 90 percent to the polls. So this is accurate data. Right. So 98 percent of practices are freaking blowing it. 
below yeah. it. We're going to rephrase that. Okay. To rephrase that. 98% of practices have the opportunity of a lifetime by simply getting in, getting engaged in more, getting to better understand. Yeah, absolutely. Patient. No, there's, there's no question. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a uh, glass, uh, a uh, half full guy, you know, oh, looking I knew that. And so, I knew that. Um, but that, that is the opportunity. And, you know, quite yeah. often uh, when, when we go in to do an evaluation, uh, you know, a, an effectiveness evaluation with the practice, we look at things like that, right? Is there a lifestyle question or first and foremost, because <clears throat> back in my um, consulting days, when I was doing primarily consulting, as I was getting OMG going, um, I knew as a consultant that implementing a lifestyle questionnaire and an optical treatment plan system, a written optical treatment plan system, uh, would on average have a 10 to 20% immediate sales increase. And what sure. that meant for me as a consultant is that when they wrote me a check, they were extremely happy with that, right? Sure. And they'd yeah. say, wow, this really worked great. I ran into someone at Seco, uh, Dr. Calvin Dalton, uh, who uh, I had first met uh, maybe eight, nine, 10, 12 years ago, I don't know. And he was, uh, he was just getting going as a young OD. And, uh, he, and we ran into each other. He said, oh, man, Bill, I haven't seen you for a long time. What's going on? Well, a lot. I'm like, I saw you're building a new building. That is amazing. And he said, this is the building that the lifestyle questionnaire and optical treatment. That's built. awesome, Bill. Built, right? I love it. I love so, it. So it's, it's, for me, like I, I, I've evolved a lot uh, in the last couple of years. And it's really... Um, you know, before I was much more into, okay, how do we take the revenue up from 750 to a million or a million to 1.5? And how do we take optical from this? How do we take the multiple percentage to this? So, you know, the metrics were everything and metrics are critical. You have to have them, you have to have that. But the truth is that if we start to shift our paradigm to how much service and benefit are we delivering to the patient with the solutions that we have, then that's when I think we're, we're able to skyrocket sales. Because yeah. you know what? We give away, listen, most people here, most people in the country give 20 to 50% off the second pair, right? 20 to 50% off. But why is it that we're still at 10%, right? Multiple pair. If it were just the deal or the money, you know, that would be the thing. But if you're convinced, right, based on your exploration of this idea of who you are, how many hours a day you spend on the computer, you know, what you do for outdoor activities, this and that. If you can kind of help convince yourself of the need for different eyewear and eye care solutions, then, um, you're, you know, you're, you're almost a fool to not buy two or three pair. Yeah. 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 Uh, dude, uh, I think apologies to, do I have to apologize? Bill, typically these conversations never go this long. Uh, but this is absolutely amazing. I feel like we could keep going like hours on end. You know what we need to do? We need we're to not do doing this video. for. Uh, we're not doing this. This isn't a four-hour webinar. It's a <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but what we do need to do. We need, we should do a live in-person four-hour event. Let's pick the yeah, city. Yeah. Uh, let's do it. Let's throw it down. Um, okay, so tying it all together, this has been an absolutely remarkably phenomenal marvelous, inspiring conversation mm -hmm. with Bill Gerber all around delivering the modern eye care experience. Um, Bill, as we kind of like, as we kind of, kind of pull things together here, yeah. for those that don't know much about you and what you're up to, share a little bit about OMG and what you all do, you know, brief bio on you, OMG, and, and how you all help practices modernize that experience. Uh, uh, thanks for asking. So um, I started OMG nine years ago now. Um, I had had another display company before called Delectable Display, which I uh, Ooh, built up and I sold. Tasty. Um, prior to that, uh, and, and I'm, I'm dating myself here, and uh, um, uh, I was with a company called NeoStyle. So I was in the high-end eyewear business for, for the better part of 10, 12 years. And, um, but I was always into design. My dad was an architect. He was a, a modern architect. He was sort of a disciple of Frank Lloyd Wright. And um, dragged us everywhere around the world to look at cool buildings and, oh, and that's awesome. so things cool. like that in museums. I'm just like, no, dad, this sucks. I hate <laughs> that, right? I want to ride my skateboard. 
And, uh, and I did. I, I, I rode my skateboard, um, actually, literally at the Parthenon in Greece and uh, the Eiffel Tower and, and other places. But um, so anyhow, I got really into design as a way to uh, boost sales. I was sales manager at Neosel, marketing manager. So we started to do cool displays, right? And we realized that the way that displays had a, an effect on psychology and purchasing. Um, so OMG uh, started out really as an advisory service, right? And we'd do these reports. Uh, you have to come up with better lighting and better optical and a great website and do lifestyle questionnaires and really pull together the experience. Um, and then we evolved. You know, every client that I had basically would say the same thing. They're like, great, the report is amazing. We want to do all these things. Um, how are we going to get that done? And can we just hire you? I'm like, yeah, I have experience in this. So, so we built a little um, group, uh, started in my kitchen. Um, the kitchen table got kind of worn out and then we you know, <laughs> uh, grew into an office. And uh, so today what we do is we design modern eye care facilities, practices uh, with an emphasis on really cool opticals, super engaging opticals. Um, but really uh, we have a team of interior designers, uh, architects. Uh, we are not a um, certified architectural firm. We work really closely with optometric architects and some other firms out there who do the actual, you know, stamped drawings. <clears throat> but we really get into um, just the same way that we're advocating to find out as much as you can about the patient. What we're th our whole thing is about, and we're 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 scaling it, which is working, which is cool. But we don't know like how far we can go. Uh, but what we do is we really find out as much as we can about the practitioner, right? What makes them tick? What are they all about? What are they passionate about? What, you know, are they big into myopia management? Are they big into this or that? Are they big into fishing? You know, what's the, what's the community all about? And then we create a practice and a look and a feel that uh, is reflective of that. Um, in addition to that, we have a digital signage platform called Content Link. Uh, we're working on this app right now that I, is probably the most exciting thing I've ever worked on. It's called Sherpa. That's going to be an omni-channel sales solution for our industry. So imagine measuring up somebody for frames that they may or may not have bought, goes into their cart, and uh, they're able to buy that later with measurements. So we're really um, a full service uh, uh, optometric um, uh, experience company and we are having so much fun doing it and we're growing like crazy right now. And uh, I'm super grateful for you, for everybody that we get to work at this, like a, pretty much a dream come true. That's awesome, Bill. And, and, and I've got to say, I know from our, our collaborations with Cold Stars practices across the country. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. It, it's marvelous. And uh, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that as we're, if we think about, and you know, like Bill, we talk offline about the yeah. success that these practices are having. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt that that experience, that yeah. experience that in part OMG is bringing to the table and we're all collaboratively doing, um, is doing remarkable things for doctors cold starting. Um, just, just through yeah. and through. So, okay, as we wrap this up, how can folks get in touch with you, Mr. Gerber? Many, many ways. Uh, you can call me anytime. <laughs> at, uh, you know, I got... Do you I want me to just give out your cell number? Oh, or man, is oh man, and this thing goes everywhere. So uh, yeah, you can... Yeah. Uh, but go to the OMG website, omghome.net. Check that out. Uh, you can uh, contact us through that anytime. You can email billg at omghome.net, billg at omghome.net, right? How do you like that? Um, operator standing by. Um, reach out anytime, omghome.net. You'll, you'll dig. There's a lot of ideas there. Oh, by the way, we just published this super cool new lookbook, which is there. Look I saw the it. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah, because you just dropped it the other day, I think, in LinkedIn. And that's what I was going to say also, y'all. Definitely, if you're in the socials, um, okay, so check out omghome.net for really cool stuff that OMG's got going on. But definitely link up with Bill yeah. in LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, whatever your platform of choice is. But I mean, personally, I'm a big fan of LinkedIn. I find LinkedIn and to our audience out there, if you're not already on LinkedIn, find your way to LinkedIn. That's where you're going to go to find just a lot of really good inspiration. There's yeah. minimal misinformation. It's all about lifting, lifting people up and seizing opportunity, right? So definitely connect with Bill in LinkedIn. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to mention before we finish up is that um, 
you know, even though we've been talking about complete practice design and, you know, creating uh, whole new spaces and so forth, the truth of the matter is that, you know, we really engage at almost any level with the practice. So if somebody's just looking around, you're like, man, I've got to spruce this up, but I don't have, you know, $100,000 to spend or 50000 Call us, right? Send us photos. We, we would love to engage. And um, most of our clients, our big clients started as small clients, right? We did a little makeover for five grand or... We ended up, uh, you know, doing signage or brand idea or some little displays. So uh, don't think that uh, you have to have huge money to, uh, to make improvements. And again, going back to the touch point map, if we can engage and we say we want to work on this now, this now, this now, um, by all means, amazing. And the last thing I wanted to mention is um, I think one of the best ways to uh, enhance the experience is to go digital in the practice. People are used to screens, right? Most opticals in particular are boring, boring, boring. Okay, and I'm going to shake my computer for the boredom. Here, <laughs> for emphasis. Uh, but, you know, add some life, add some motion, uh, make it interesting because, you know, we are attracted to motion. And if we don't have any motion, then by all means, uh, people might overlook us. So, um, and that's what we do too at Content Links, a digital signage platform. So, yeah, man, this is yeah. so cool. Thanks for, yeah. Eric, thanks for bringing what you bring, man. You bring a super fresh perspective and uh, the best energy. So, uh, thank you. Keep thanks, brother. Your- awesome. Well, hey, that's what we're all about. And it ain't just me, man, because as you know, the Acrinos, uh, we're a family. It's an amazing team composed of amazing people. And, you know, Bill, we get the opportunity to do the things that we do and deliver the value we can bring because we've got remarkable collaborators like yourself and your team, like uh, Jen Denham and the team at Optify, like uh, Kayla Ashley. By the way, Kayla, Kayla was so good. She oh, dropped a little, hey, what's up? See? You know, what they're doing yeah. over at Spexy. Just remarkable stuff. There's so much opportunity here in modern eye care. And, uh, you know, Bill Gerber, thank you so much for joining thank us here. You. Oh, by the way, us. by the way, last thing I'm going to say, I'm going to plug Kayla like I plugged Jen, but Kayla's frame turn product for keeping track of inventory. Dude, OMG. absolutely. Yeah. OMG. Yeah. Doesn't get much better. <laughs> Don't get much better than that. Absolutely. Um, well, hey, uh, for all those that viewed, whether you're viewing here live or you caught it on the replay, we hope this was valuable stuff. Definitely catch up with Mr. Bill Gerber, OMG Marketing Group at omghome.net. And uh, if you're looking for more great modern practice management solutions like this and insights, follow Acrinos across the socials and visit Acrinos.com for everything you need at any phase of that practice journey. Bill Gerber, man, have a good one. Thanks a bunch. Amazing. Bye. Oh, wait up. I changed. It was supposed to go to the song. So here's the exit song. The exit song. Okay, let's cue it up. Cue it up. (laughs) 